on prophecy in sleep in parva naturalia by aristotle translated by william alexander hammond this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by geoffrey edwards chapter one regarding prophecy in sleep and the prophecy said to be derivable from dreams it is difficult either to treat it with contempt or to believe in it for the universal or widespread belief in the prophetic nature of dreams based as it is on experience lends support to this view and it is not incredible that certain events are foreseen in dreams there is a certain reasonableness in this and so one might in like manner apply this belief to other dreams the fact however that one cannot discover any intelligible cause for their occurrence creates distrust in them the theory of divine origin is absurd because in addition to its irrationality one observes that these dreams do not come to the best and wisest but to all sorts of men but when their divine causation is excluded there is no other reasonable origin that one can assign for it seems to transcend our power of understanding to discover an explanation of the story that certain persons foretell the future through legends on the pillars of hercules or on the borysthenes dreams taken either in their entirety or partially or singly must then be causes or signs of events or else they must be accidental phenomena Quotes, cause i understand in the sense of the moon's being the cause of the sun's eclipse and fatigue being the cause of fever by quotes, sign i mean e g that a sign of an eclipse is a star's becoming visible in daylight or the roughness of the tongue in fever by an quote, accidental phenomenon close quote, i mean e g that an eclipse of the sun happens while one is taking a walk for taking a walk is neither sign nor cause of an eclipse neither is an eclipse the sign or cause of taking a walk consequently no accidental phenomenon takes place constantly or even as a rule is it then possible that some dreams are causes and others signs e g of physical events well-educated physicians at any rate say that we should pay close attention to dreams and this view is also regarded as reasonable by laymen who are investigators and philosophers for the physical movements that occur by day unless they are very full and vigorous are unnoticed when they are experienced along with greater waking excitations in sleep however the reverse is true for then the trivial movements seem to be the important ones as is apparent from frequently observed facts regarding sleep when slight noises fall upon the ear one thinks it lightens and thunders and when a bit of mucus flows into the mouth one thinks one is tasting the sweet flavour of honey and when a very slight heat is felt in any member one thinks one is walking through fire and is fever hot but when one awakes one discovers the real facts since then all beginnings are small it is evident that the beginning of disease and other bodily affections on the point of development will be small and these necessarily show themselves more in sleep than in the waking state yet it is really not unreasonable to suppose that certain sleeping fancies are causes of actions peculiar to the individual for when we are on the point of doing something or are in the midst of it or have accomplished it it frequently happens that we are occupied and busy with the same thing in a distinct dream the explanation of which is that the dream movement has been already started from origins in the day's activity and as this is true so the converse must be true viz that the movements in sleep are often the starting points for the activities of the day because the thought for the latter is already started on its way in our nocturnal fancies in this sense therefore certain dreams may be signs and causes but most prophetic dreams are things of chance 
especially all those that transcend us and whose origination is not in our power as e g a naval battle and remote events the situation here is just like that of a man who thinks of a thing and in that instant the thing appears for what is there to prevent this being also true of dreams it is even more likely that many accidents of this sort should occur here just as in the former case thinking of a thing is neither sign nor cause of the thing's appearing so here the beholder's dream is neither sign nor cause of the event but only accident consequently most dreams do not come true for chance is that which occurs neither constantly nor even as a rule chapter two since other animals than man have dreams one may say in a word that dreams are not sent from god and do not occur for his ends they are however demonic for their nature is demonic but not divine this is proven by the fact that very ordinary men have prophetic visions and true dreams showing that god does not send them but such men as have a loquacious and atribilious nature see all sorts of visions and because these excitations are many and diversified they chance upon thoughts which correspond with reality hitting the right thing here just as one sometimes hits in the game of quote, odd and even close quote. for in this instance the proverb applies quote, who often shoots will sometimes hit close quote that many dreams do not come true is not strange for even the signs in physical and heavenly processes such as the signs of rain and wind often fail for if another movement sets in which is stronger than the one indicated the indicated event does not take place also many well-matured plans of what ought to be done fail of execution because other more important motives arise for not every expected event occurs and one must not identify the future with the expected nevertheless one must say that there are certain causes to which this lack of fulfilment is due and these are natural signs of the non-occurrence of the given events in regard to dreams which are not due to such origins as we have mentioned but to origins that either in point of time place or magnitude are extraordinary or which are not to be described in this way at all and yet the dreamer does not have in himself the cause in these cases unless the prophetic character is accidental it would be better to explain such foresight in the following way rather than in the way employed by democritus who explains them by images and effluxes just as when water or air is stirred the stirred part sets another part in motion and after this has come to rest a similar motion is continued up to a certain point even in the absence of the moving agent so nothing prevents a certain movement and sensation from reaching the soul in sleep produced by those objects from which democritus says images and effluxes are thrown off and these movements reaching the soul in some way or other are more distinctly felt at night because they are more readily dissipated when they enter by day for the night air is less apt to be disturbed owing to the calmer nature of night and they awaken sensation in the body on account of sleep for persons when asleep detect slight internal processes more sharply than when awake these movements awaken fancies out of which one foresees the future in events similar to the fancies this power of prevision then occurs in any ordinary person and not in the wisest for if prevision were sent of god it would come by day and to the wise in this manner however it is reasonable that prevision comes to ordinary men for the minds of such persons are not given to careful thought but are as it were reft and empty of all content and when stimulated they follow the lead of the moving agent the reason why certain persons afflicted with ecstatic mania have prevision is that their own excitations do not distract them but are rather thrown off by them and 
therefore they have a special perception of processes foreign to them that some persons have true dreams and that familiar acquaintances have prevision especially regarding each other comes from the fact that acquaintances concern themselves most about each other for just as it is most true of intimate friends that they recognize and see each other at a distance better than others do so it is also with these movements for the movements of acquaintances are more easily recognized the atrabilious like long-distance throwers owing to the vehemence of their natures hit their aim and owing to their mobile disposition they have a quick fancy for sequence for as philagides in his poems and insane persons recite and think out sequences that depend on similarity as illustrated in the song of aphrodite so these dreamers string together a series of events for owing to their passionate nature they are not swerved aside by extraneous movements the most skilful interpreter of dreams is he who can discern resemblances for a plain dream can be interpreted by anybody by resemblances i mean as i said before that the pictures of imagination are very like pictures in the water in the latter when the movement is violent the reflection and picture bear no resemblance to the reality and so a clever interpreter is one who can quickly distinguish and see at a glance in the confused and distorted picture the suggestion of a man or horse or whatever the given object may be and as the picture in the water so the dream can be similarly distorted for movement destroys the distinctness of dreams we have now explained the nature of sleep and dreams and have given the cause of their occurrence and have further explained the entire subject of divination by means of them end of chapter two and end of on prophecy in sleep recording in memory of mitchell edwards